Assalamu alaikum. We are going to study about the Norma Bazalis now. The Norma Bazalis is divided into three parts for the ease of study. This is the upper part or the interior part which is formed by the alveolar sockets and the hard palate in between them. The, this is demarcation for the upper anterior part. Then is the middle part and a horizontal line passing through the anterior margin of the foramen magnum divides the middle part from the posterior part. The anterior part looking closely has alveolar sockets which are present in the alveolar process of the maxillary bone. They house the upper teeth. In the middle it is formed by the hard palate. This hard palate in its anterior two-thirds is formed by the palatine process of the maxillary bone and the horizontal plate of the palatine bone. The anterior two-thirds is formed by the palatine process of the maxillary bone and the posterior one-third is formed by the horizontal plate of the palatine bone. Between the two maxillary bones is the intermaxillary suture. Between the two palatine bones, that is the horizontal plates of the palatine bone, is the interpalatine suture. Between the maxillary and the palatine bone is the palatomaxillary suture. Now if we look closely, we have in the form of a cross, a suture that is formed between the intermaxillary suture, interpalatine suture and a palatomaxillary suture. This is also called a cruciform suture. The other important features are the, all of the hard palate has small pits in it. These are the pits for the palate and glands. In the midline anteriorly at the junction of the intermaxillary suture there is a fossa. This fossa is called the incisive fossa and if we look inside which can be visualized here this fossa gets opening of two incisive canals on the right and the left side. This is the interior which we can see the canals. At the lateral margins behind it, there um, behind the lateral margins of the palatomaxillary suture is the greater palatine foramen. This is going to have a groove leading towards the incisive foramen. Behind the greater palatine foramen are two or three lesser palatine foramen. One, two or three are visualized here. Both of them are going to house the greater and lesser palatine nerves and vessels. At the posterior most part of the hard palate, there is a projection. This projection is called posterior nasal spine. Another ridge or a projection running from the posterior part of the greater palatine foramen near the posterior border of the hard palate medially this ridge is called the palatine crest. We are going to look at the attachments here. The posterior nasal spine gives attachment to musculus uvulae and the posterior border gives attachment to palatine aponeurosis. This ridge, which is the palatine crest, gives attachment to tensor villi palatini. If we study the middle part, the middle portion which extends from the posterior part, posterior border of the hard palate till an imaginary line which is present at the anterior margin of the foramen magnum is the middle part of the norma basalis. To ease it, its study, we are going to study the median part and the lateral part. The median part anteriorly has a thin plate of bone. This plate of bone which separates the two posterior nasal apertures is called vomer. Then there is a big bar of bone which is formed by the body of the sphenoid and the basilar part of the occipital bone. If we look closely, this bone, this thin bone which is present between the two posterior nasal apertures is called vomer. This vomer on its inferior attachment is attached to the bony part of the palate. Superiorly, it is divided into two ala, this and this, right and left ala, and it 
articulates with the rostrum of the sphenoid bone. This bar of bone on its posterior side has a tubercle. This tubercle is called pharyngeal tubercle. There are two canals which are present between the um, vomer and the medial derigoid plate. To understand them, first we have to consider that this part, which is the medial derigoid plate, it is a perpendicular part and forms the lateral boundary of the bony um, posterior nasal aperture. It articulates with the perpendicular plate of the palate and bone and they are both thin bones the articulation is not visible in specimens so we cannot distinguish the two bones here a little bit of the articular um, here a little bit of the suture is seen but these two articulations are impossible to distinguish between the medial pterygoid plate and the perpendicular process of the palatine bone superiorly the medial pterygoid plate sends a process which is called the vaginal process towards the body of the sphenoid. This vaginal process has a groove which is converted into a foramen by the sphenoidal process of the perpendicular plate of the palatine bone. Here, this converts the groove into a canal which is called palatovaginal canal just lateral to the palatovaginal canal again the vaginal process of the medial pterygoid plate which is still coming towards the sphenoid bone is covered by the ala of the vomer and it is going to form a canal which is going to be called vomerovaginal canal so two canals are present between the vomer and the medial pterygoid plate a palatovaginal canal and a vomerovaginal canal the median area has some attachments. The pharyngeal tubercle gets attachment of a raphe, which gives attachment to the superior constrictor of the pharynx. This is the part that is going to be uh, uh, the superior part of the pharynx, which is called the nasopharynx. The part in front of the pharyngeal tubercle, it forms the roof of the nasopharynx and houses the pharyngeal tonsils. Lateral to the pharyngeal tubercle, we have the attachment of longismus capitus muscle. If we study the lateral area of the middle part, we have two types of bones, the sphenoid bone and the temporal bone. The sphenoid bone has two parts, the greater wing of sphenoid, which is extended towards the temporal fossa and the pterygoid processes. And there are three parts of the temporal bone, the squamous part, the tympanic part and the petrous part. The squamous part is the part where the root of zygoma attaches. This part, it is extending downwards. The tympanic part is the part which forms the anteroinferior margin of the external acoustic meatus and the petrous temporal part which we have studied in the interior of the skull. If we look at the pterygoid processes and we look here, what we can see is that these pterygoid processes extend from the base downwards okay they are extending from the base downwards they originate at the junction of the greater wing of sphenoid with the body of the sphenoid they originate at the junction of the greater wing of sphenoid and the body of the sphenoid it moves downwards in the lower part it is divided into two parts a medial pterygoid plate and a lateral pterygoid plate. This medial pterygoid plate, we have talked about it, that it articulates with the perpendicular plate of the palatine bone. Anteriorly, these two plates are joined together and on the lateral side, this anterior margin is separated from the posterior part of the maxilla by a pterygo maxillary fissure, this part. The, now, if we talk about these two plates, the medial pterygoid plate is directed backwards. It forms the lateral boundary of the posterior nasal aperture. It articulates with the perpendicular plate of the palatine bone. 
superiorly when it attaches to the body of the sphenoid it is divided into two parts which encloses the scaphoid fossa inferiorly it has a projection this projection here it is called the pterygoid humulus the medial pterygoid plate has a medial wall a lateral wall and a free posterior margin between the medial pterygoid plate and the lateral pterygoid plate is the pterygoid fossa this part the lateral pterygoid plate also has two walls a medial wall a lateral wall and a free posterior margin the infratemporal part of the greater wing of sphenoid is in the shape of a pentagon it has an anterior boundary an anterolateral boundary an and posterolateral boundary a posteromedial boundary and an anteromedial boundary so it has five boundaries anterior anterolateral posterolateral posteromedial and the anteromedial boundary the anterior boundary is formed by the posterior surface of the inferior orbital fissure this part the here my pencil is coming out of it the inferior orbital fissure this is the anterior boundary the anterolateral boundary is formed by the infratemporal crest which we have studied in the temporal fossa this part infratemporal crest the posterolateral boundary it articulates with the squamous part of the temporal bone posteromedial boundary it articulates with the petrous part of the temporal bone and anteromedially it has the attachment of the pterygoid plates on the posteromedial boundary there are specific foramina an oval foramina foramen which is present just behind the scaphoid fossa this is the foramen ovale which we have studied in the interior of the skull posterolateral to the foramen ovale is the foramen spinosum which is which we have also studied in the interior of the skull between the foramen ovale and the scaphoid fossa there is a fossa a foramen which is called foramen of vesalius and between the foramen ovale and spinosum there is a foramen which is also called canaliculus innominatus then the parts where the posteromedial and the posterolateral boundaries meet here is a is the spine of the sphenoid bone in the area between the posteromedial surface and the petrous part of the temporal bone is grooved we can visualize it here and this groove houses the cartilaginous part of the auditory tube now if we look at the attachments the pterygoid humulus gives attachment the pterygoid humulus gives attachment to the superior constrictor and the pharyngeo mandibular raphe the scaphoid fossa gives attachment to the tensor villi palatini muscle the lateral part lateral wall of the lateral pterygoid plate gives attachment to lateral pterygoid muscle the medial wall gives attachment to the medial pterygoid muscle the whole of the infratemporal surface gives attachment to the lateral pterygoid muscle if we talk about the spine which is present at the junction of the posteromedial and the posterolateral borders this spine on its lateral side has the auriculotemporal nerve and on its medial side has the corda tympani and the auditory tube 